come before you this night. We're so thankful, Lord, for another opportunity to come into your house to worship you in spirit and in truth. We're so thankful, Lord Jesus, that we know, mighty Savior, that you're a God that is able to meet each and every need that is here this night, Lord. We just ask, mighty Savior, that you have your way. Bless each and every song of Zion. Bless each and everything that we do. And to your glory, Lord, let us worship you and glorify you this night, mighty Savior. Just have your way in the midst of your people. Truly we know, mighty Jesus, that you are a God that is able to meet each need. We just ask, Lord Jesus, that you have your way this evening. Let us lay aside every way, Lord, to worship you in spirit and in truth. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor in Jesus' precious name we ask it. Amen, amen, amen. 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 Uh, Brother Shea. Amen. You know all of them. Stop. <laughs> what page was it? What page is it, Kevin? Page 378. It's page 73, Kevin. Yeah. Christ our Redeemer died on the cross. Died for the sinner
for another opportunity to come into your house to worship you in spirit and in truth. We're so thankful, Lord Jesus, that we know, mighty Savior, that you're a God that is able to meet each and every need that is here this night, Lord. We just ask, mighty Savior, that you have your way. Bless each and every song of Zion. Bless each and everything that we do. And to your glory, Lord, let us worship you and glorify you this night, mighty Savior. Just have your way in the midst of your people. Truly we know, mighty Jesus, that you are a God that is able to meet each need. We just ask, Lord Jesus, that you have your way this evening. Let us lay aside every way, Lord, to worship you in spirit and in truth. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor in Jesus' precious name we ask it. Amen, amen, amen. 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 Uh, Brother Shay. You know all of them. <laughs> what, page, what, what page was it? What page is it, Kevin? Page 378. Page 73, Kevin. Yeah. Christ, our Redeemer. No, no. 
hottest time ever. It is fun. No matter what kind of trials and tests we go through, serving God is fun. That's what Brother Pat always said. We used to have a sign at the old church hanging up that says, Serving God is fun, fun, fun. Amen. I'd be, rather be serving Him than a worthy of Him. I'm going to take a prayer request at this time. And do still remember Brother Pat and lift him up before the Lord. Amen. Brother Shane. Amen. I know it's very hard on your mom having Chris and the three kids out there. You know, it's just, it's a lot of responsibility and I, you know, she's bringing them into school and picking them up and everything. So please remember them. Sister Judy. Uh, keep remembering Patty and her situation and keep remembering Bill. And I have to pray for her. He had his first echogram about two months ago and his heart was 20% open. He had one Monday and the doctor called us and he said, I've got good news for you. His heart is coming 50% now. And I praise the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Great. It is great. Uh, Sister Jenna. I'd like to church remember all of my children, my grandchildren. Uh, remember all of my son and all of my brother Tim and all of his family. Um, also, a little boy that I take care of. Um, about three years ago, I, I requested prayer for his mother when she was pregnant. They found out she had cancer. And they kept wanting her to abort the baby, and she would not. And she she pushed through and, and so she was like 37 weeks and he's just the most wonderful little thing and uh, he started complaining yesterday or, or last evening uh, his legs were going to go bad and so she took him out to the doctor a uh, hospital to check and there was nothing wrong and she ended up taking him to Riley today and they did a bunch of tests and he has juvenile arthritis and so just like uh, Chicago does so and they said that anytime he gets a virus or gets sick in any way plan on there being a flare-up. And so please pray uh, that, that God would just touch him, you know, because it's a very difficult thing when there's little children like that. Amen. I'll be sure. Gosh, when your leg hurts, nope. She says, he'll be, even though there's no. She'll say, nope. She says, he'll be. Nope. She'll say, he'll be. That's what we got to do. I said, faith of a child. Michelle and Renee and uh, Rhonda continue to pray for them. And I also have to pray for court. And um, Jody Mallow, she did not break her hip. She just uh, dislocated it and put it back. So she's back at home. She's doing good. So uh, I thank the Lord for that good report. Um, I like for the church to remember Stacy. She fell tonight. Told her dad not to park where he parked, but he did. So she fell in a hole and twisted her ankle. And she caught herself before she, she would have fell flat on her belly, she said. But she caught herself <coughs> with her arms. So um, just remember her. Um, she has a lot on her plate right now. And remember Danny. <coughs> he starts his new job tomorrow. He's working. He's great. All goes well in the And then uh, uh, Amen. We've been missing you guys. Yes. 
We've been missing you. <coughs> got another request. Uh, I remember Stephen Baker Wango and Maria and Joy and all of them that was coming. Uh, just pray that they get the desire to want to be established. She, she asked me to pray for that she would um, get established in church. And since I've been praying for that, she hasn't been. So just pray that the Lord put that desire there. And also remember uh, Sister Reba and her family. And I'd like for you to remember Brother Hugh and all the ones that passed away. Mm -hmm. Thank you. My mama. Your mama? And my sister and my family. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. We're not supposed to know about me, but. Yeah, we can't call them. That's why. Mm -hmm. Remember my family and, and uh, Brian. She, I'm sure her parents are changing off. Mm -hmm. You know how they do. Sister Janice. My daughter is saying that um, I want to thank the Lord again for bringing the price of gasoline down for us. And uh, pray for our nation. Pray for the people. Pray for those that uh, don't uh, have any warm places to be. And uh, uh, pray for those that are hungry. And, uh, pray for our nation to rise up and uh, turn to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Anyone else have a prayer request they want to make known? Remember all of the people that uh, normally are here. Got a lot of people out. A lot of people out. I don't know if she was working in the evening or not. She, she might have been since uh, it was family uh, Thanksgiving. That's what I was saying. Yeah. Remember little tall hands where he's at? They were having... Uh, Family Thanksgiving at Grandview, and so it did start to five thirty. And I know I'm normally here by six, so I uh, are a little after, and so I I told him I said I wouldn't be there this evening, but that's where little Tony is. He wanted to have Thanksgiving dinner with Mary, so anyway, remember that. Is there anyone else want to have a prayer request? Unspoken request by the lift of hands. Amen. Let's remember our community. Uh, all of those, like they was said, that that's homeless. You know, uh, that Thanksgiving coming up, especially those that have loved, lost loved ones uh, this year, because the holidays is always the hardest for people who have lost loved ones. Uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas, and <coughs> we have a lot of things coming up. I, I didn't forget one. Uh, I prayed for my, my dad's side of the family. I prayed for my dad's side of the family. I prayed for my dad's side of the family. Well, your dad's uncle. Brother, well, my dad's brother. Your brother. Amen. Amen. Let's all pray together. Mighty Savers, we come before you this night. We're so thankful, Lord, that we do know that you are the one that we look up to for each and every one of these prayer requests. We know that you hear each and every one of them, Lord, whether they're spoken or whether they're silent. We know that cancer is just a word, Mighty Savior, but that name of Jesus is above every name, Mighty Savior. And we know, Lord, that you're a way maker, Lord, the secret to be no way. And each and every one of these requests that have come up before you this night, we know that you know the need there, Mighty Savior. By your stripes we are healed, that you took our afflictions and your properties upon yourself, Lord Jesus, and you know, hallelujah, healing is a children's bread. We know by the same with those that need jobs, you know exactly where they are, that you know exactly the needs for your people this night, Lord. Bless us, Lord, that you draw in your spirit, Lord, those that have fallen by the wayside. Encourage your mighty Savior and draw in your spirit. Truly we know, Lord, that thou art a way made the way to seem it to be no way. We know, Lord Jesus, that you're saying yes to today and forevermore, that you change it not. Remember, Brother Pat, as we lift him up before you, mighty Savior, just have your way, Lord. Remember, Sister Carolyn, Brother Kenny, all of those mighty Savior, hallelujah's name has been called out here this night, Lord, knowing full well that you are the one that is able to keep each and every one of us, Lord, do this. The lifter up of our hands, mighty Savior, that you are the way maker. We just ask, Lord, that your will be done in each and every one of these matters, Lord. Bless those that have lost loved ones, mighty Savior. Hallelujah. We encourage our heart. Hallelujah. And mighty Savior, we stand before you this night. We just give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. So thank the Lord that we do know that we call upon you through the holy grace in Jesus' gracious name. Let the church say amen. 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 God is so <coughs> Hallelujah. Run too long have been burdened.
uh, it was going to come Sunday night, and it started snowing, and I was like, yeah, I'm going to take the better go home, because uh, of all the, you know, drive down 252 and then down 135, I just didn't feel comfortable, so I was like, yeah. It didn't even snow here. Yeah, yeah. it was snowing. It was sunshine. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Where? <laughs> I didn't see no sunshine. <laughs> it's nice in here. But God's still been good to us this week. You know, He's still blessed us no matter what. Uh, Shane asked me to sing this song. And, and you know, I have to do what my husband says. So, <laughs> but he said, he said, he said, uh, uh, you know, we do have a lot to be thankful for, and we do. I mean, God has blessed us so much. I mean, I couldn't even begin. I'd be standing here all night just to tell you how much God has blessed us. I mean, He's just been too good to us. But uh, I'm not gonna ramble on because I'll, I'll just I'm, I'm a big crybaby. So, <laughs> but God is good to us anyway, and uh, I thank God for earning jobs. And, and uh, I don't I don't like the fact that I have to miss church on Sunday mornings. But you know, I ain't nothing really I can do about that. But. Uh, God's still good anyway. Amen. Uh, Amen. So much to thank you for it, Yep. <clears throat> when I look Still good. 
regardless, you know, I, I do have a lot to thank you for because of everything that he's done for me. You know, I can stand up here all night, like I said before, and tell you all the things that God's done for me. I was talking to one of my cousins the other day, and I said, you know, we was talking about the things physically that I've been through, you know, uh, strokes and massive seizures and two brain surgeries, and, and I said, you know, I've had a mild heart attack, and I said, I've had a lot of things wrong with me, and he said, but you know what? You can still smile through it all. Yeah, and I said, that's because God put it there. That's why I can still smile through it all. I can still stand and laugh and smile through it all, because God put that joy there. No man put it there, but God did. So I'm just, I'm just thankful. I'm just thankful for everything. Amen. Bless the Lord. When the burdens grow greater, the Lord
Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so let's have a lot of time. Try and write them down. Like the one that's, that sentence about salvation is free. No, is it, is it not? Maybe, maybe it is. Maybe it is. A lot of people died for this cause, give their life for it. Absolutely. Jesus gives the ultimate sacrifice. And I think today, uh, talk about the one big last revival we're all going to have. Well, Jesus said he's going to pour out his flesh and all spirit. Like I'm thinking, not everybody's going to receive that, though, you know. There's still going to be people turned away. But the Bible says, you know, in, um, in um, Luke, it says that, that I, I read this, uh, what, Tuesday or? Okay. Tuesday or Sunday, but he come to set fire upon the earth, and what if, it, if it's already been kindled? But, you know, it says, I suppose you that I am come to give peace on earth, I have to tell you nay, but rather give divisions. From henceforth there shall be five and one house divided, three against two and two against three. The father shall be divided against the son and the son against the father. This is just, it's going to happen. No, not everybody's going to receive this. Like I think about that, you know, um, when even when Jesus was hanging on the cross, you know, there was two people on each side of him. One receiving and one that railed on him and said, they railed on him. That means he cussed him, he cursed, he did everything, you know. He did not receive him. And in that last, even the Bible said that there would be two working in the field. Talk about, no, there's going to be a separation time. You know, there's two working in the field. One's going to be taken, one's going to be left. Two, two laying in the bed, that means there's man and the wife. One will be taken, one will be left. We look around, people that have been in church, that should be in church, not everybody's going to make it. That's what, I'm, that's what I've been thinking, you know. The, and I've got to think about that great gulf that's going to be fixed in between that, that people. And, it, and they're going to see us, but not, we're not, we're not, not, they're not going to be able to see, see them, you know. They're going to be a, it's a great, terrible day of the Lord, you know. And it's just, that, that gulf, I looked that word up all ago, and it, it's, it comes from the Greek, it means that. Hang on, I'll put it down. <laughs> It means the interval, or an impossible interval, the places cannot be crossed. Once, once that's fixed, it cannot be crossed, you know, and uh, that's just, you know, that's what I was thinking about today, that, that revival is going to happen, and there's going to be a great separation, and the people's not going to make it, and, and they're going to see the, you know, the good times we're having. But, yes, you know, Brother Pat talked about this before, you know, that great gulf has been fixed, and they're not going to be able, be able to cross it. You know, and, and I don't want that to happen to me, of course, or none of my family, because he's so good that it, it just really has been bothering me lately to see the people that have been here and made promises yes. and, you know, and, and say, this is my church. Yes. You know, during revivals, they're party Christians, as Brother Pat used to say all the time. You know, they come for the good time, but they don't, they don't come from the long haul. You know, it's just, it, it don't take much either, it's really just, coming in between people, does it, Sister Georgiana? Uh -huh. No, one little word or one little thing can cause a great division. You know, it did me and my dad for many, many years. You know, there was a great golf fix between us, but you know, thank God that we, we got all worked out before us. Uh -huh. We made it pass. You know, we spent a week there, and it was really good to bond back with him. It was five years, wasn't it? A long time, wasn't it? Twelve years. Just over one little silly little thing, you know. But, you know, God made it right, I made it right, he made it right, and that's all that matters. But, you know, it, it, can, it can be fixed. Things can be fixed. And that's all I had really had in my heart was that, that, that great golf is going to be fixed in between the, the unrighteous. You know, it's a great, terrible day of the Lord. And, and one of the days we're going to come back and walk on the tread on the ashes of the wicked, the Bible says. And uh, I'm going to be counting that number of his going up. But, just like the rich man and Lazarus. Lazarus, that's what that was back, you know. He could see, and he wanted to, him to tell his brothers, we all know these stories. That's why I, I get, I think, no, we've heard these stories over and over and over. What can I say different that to make a difference? The stories are good. The stories are good. I can't say anything any different that you guys haven't already heard. You know, that's just, sometimes we need reminders. But, yeah, he, no, he, Lazarus looked up and, and he, you know, there was nothing he could do about it. He wanted his brother to be told. He wanted everybody to be told. But it's, it was just too late, you know. And one of these days we're going to look around and it's going to be too late, you know. Well, not us. The ones that, you know, 
It's called that. You ain't got your right, right? You gotta get your life right. Mm -hmm. You know, like the like the people on the cross, he he was a dying day, but he made it right and he asked Jesus to forgive him. And he said, This day you shall be with me in paradise. You no, know, all it takes is a few little words. Your last breath. A lot of people don't believe in deathbed repentance, but I do. Yeah. You know, absolutely. You know, if, if it wasn't there, that's a deathbed repentance. Am I, is that the right, Sister Jennifer? Absolutely. It's if you only have a breath left in your body and you ask for forgiveness, then He's there to, to forgive you. Yeah. Quick, I heard a song yesterday. I think it was talk about. Um, he sold. He he sold a. He traded, he traded gold for his silver. Is what the song, I don't know if you've heard this song or not, but Judas traded gold for his silver. And, and even though he did that, Jesus, he, Judas didn't know, but all he had to do was just ask Jesus for forgiveness. For forgiveness. You know, yes, I suppose he didn't know, but he could have asked. Even that something like that, you know, he could have asked for forgiveness. But Judas didn't know this. And uh, I love the Lord. And he, you know, he is dealing with me on a lot of things, a lot of thoughts. And one of these days I'll get it all out there, like be as good as Sister Jennifer or something. Be bad. Huh? Be bad. No, I don't. I'm not a speaker. I never have been a good speaker. I wasn't either. <laughs> either, either. Yeah, I wasn't either. <laughs> I'm not either. But no, if the Lord gives me a thought, I like to try to get it out there, which he gives me a lot of thoughts on a lot of other things. But this that great golf is going to be, well, I think that was going to be fixed for I can't cross. It's, it's gonna be. It's gonna be sad. Amen. And I love the Lord. That's all I have. All right, Jim. Just be there. Huh? A little people to nurse him home. And it was in uh, Nehemiah five that I was reading this morning, and it was where uh, Nehemiah got upset about how the rich was oppressing the uh, the poor and uh, and how and how uh, you know that really angered him and you know and uh, uh, it wasn't uh, uh, well anyway it was a, it was a, a righteous anger you know it was an anger of love for for the ones that were being done wrong and anyway, so to take care of this here problem, because these people, it said that, uh, this, this is in Nehemiah 5, if you want to read it. It said that uh, uh, these uh, poor people were having to uh, sell their property and their houses and, and even uh, uh, send their children out, uh, you know, to uh, be as slaves, you know, just to uh, have a little food, you know, to eat. <coughs> And so when Nehemiah found us out, um, he went uh, and announced this, you know, publicly. And um, so uh, I guess that he embarrassed, you know, the ones that were doing it, the uh, rich. And anyway, uh, uh, they returned, restored all that uh, they had taken from the poor. And, uh, it also makes me think about how, um, because, you know, like uh, like I have left a store and then I realized, you know, uh, that I didn't get my correct change back. And uh, so, you know, I, I'll say, you know, well, Lord, you know, restore that back unto me. And I've done that in lots of situations. And I think God can and I think God cares about, um, you know, what somebody has taken from you. And especially if you care for me deliberately. And so anyway, that's what I spoke about at the nursing home. Thank you. <laughs> huh? A little people to nursing home. <laughs> and uh, it was in uh, Nehemiah 5 that I was reading this morning. And it was where uh, Nehemiah got upset about how the rich was oppressing the uh, the poor and uh, and how and how uh, you know that really angered him and you know and uh, uh, it wasn't uh, uh, 
Well, anyway, it was a, it was a, a righteous anger, you know. It was an anger of love for for the ones that were being done wrong. And anyway, so to take care of this here problem, because these people, it said that, uh, is, this is in Nehemiah 5, if you want to read it. It said that uh, uh, these uh, poor people were having to uh, sell their property and their houses and, and even uh, uh, send their children out, uh, you know, to uh, be as slaves, you know, just to uh, have a little food, you know, to eat. <coughs> And so when Nehemiah found us out, uh, he went uh, and announced this, you know, publicly. And um, so uh, I guess that <coughs> embarrassed, you know, the ones that were doing it, the uh, rich. And anyway, uh, uh, they returned, restored all that uh, they had taken from the poor. And, uh, it also makes me think about how, um, because, you know, like uh, like I have left a store, and then I realized, you know, uh, that I didn't get my correct change back. And uh, so, you know, I, I'll say, you know, well, Lord, you know, restore that back unto me. And I've done that in lots of situations. And I think God can, and I think God cares about, um, you know, what somebody has taken from you. And especially if you care when they don't deliberately. And so anyway, that's what I spoke about as a nursing home. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. The other day when I was reading the word was in Ezekiel 37 <clears throat> and 3, and it said, And he said unto me, and to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered the Lord and said, Thou knowest. And I have been contemplating on that. We have a lot of dead abundance. There's, um, I'm talking about the spiritual day. And uh, it's just been going through my mind and going through my mind. You know, it don't matter how many times you come into a church. You know, it don't matter how many times you sit in a pew. It don't matter how many you pick up, how many times you pick up the Word. It don't matter all of them things. It matters your one-on-one -on -one relationship with Jesus Christ. He says that in um, 4, it says, and again, he says unto me, prophesy unto these bones and say unto them, ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. It's the word of the Lord that's going to save us. It's the word of the Lord, it's the bone, it's the marrow to our bone. And uh, I seen a little thing on Facebook, I don't know if you've seen it, Sister Jennifer, about the cake. It says, the word of God, the Bible, is the bread for a daily living. It isn't a cake for occasions. You know, a lot of people want to use this Bible when it fits their lives. But if it don't fit their lives, they don't want to have a part with the Bible. And that's what I'm talking about spiritually dying. You know, um, I, I told him Sunday, or sorry, Tuesday, I said, you know, I just talked to somebody the other day about church, and I, I was telling them, you know, the Lord said in, in, uh, in Revelations, He said, I have somewhat against you because you left your first love. He said He'd rather have us uh, hot or cold. He don't want us to warm. He don't want us playing in church. He don't want us to be alive when we come in here or out there and be dead set in pews. You understand what I'm saying? And, and it's been really dealing with me because... Starting with myself, I, I read my Bible at home, and I'm not boasting on me. I'm not doing that. But you can't just pick up the Bible when you're sitting in church. Amen. You can't get just a feeding in the church. You have to have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with Jesus Christ. And I was praying about it, and I said, Lord, if there's anything in you, me, I want, I want the flesh to die out. That's our goal. He wants the flesh to die out. He wants us to be more spiritual. But the question is, what dog are you feeding? Are you feeding the spiritual dog? Or are you feeding the natural dog? Are you getting the spiritual things in you? Are you are you asking the Lord to write them on the tables of your heart? Are you absorbing them? Or are they are they going to be the nourishment of your body? Are they giving you strength? Are they giving you vitamin? Are they giving you the energy to go on? Or are you eating over here 
at the, the snack table, Sister Jennifer, where the cookies are and the cakes are, if you don't have any meat, you ain't going to have any protein for that body. And that's what he's been dealing with me about. And I, and I was on my bus um, for the last two days, and I said, Lord, whatever it is in me, if it's not of you, Lord, take it out of me. Because that's where I want to be in my life. And he spoke this scripture to me. He said, I took a heart of stone. And I put a heart of flesh. Yeah. And I remember, Sister Jennifer, I remember this so well. And I, I testified about this. How I used to be so hard. So hard. And I sat on a pew, Sister Daisy, for 10 years since my sister. 10 years. You guys know the testimony? I hated her. We went to church for 10 years together. We worshiped together, Sister Jennifer. We cried together. We prayed together. We seen souls one together. But there was still malice in that heart. There was still hatred in that heart. There was still that heart of flesh in there. And God asked me one day, does those bones live? We can speak life and death in each other. And I didn't know it, but I was speaking death in my sister. I was, because I hated her. Jealousy is as cruel as a grave. He don't, God said he's a jealous God, but he's a just God. And I played church for so many years. And we can't get caught up in the motions. We can get caught up in the, in the actions. We can, we can um, get ourselves to buy, uh, the Bible. They say if you do something repetitive, more than 12 times, it becomes a habit. We do a lot of things out of habit. And I was, I was praying, Sister Daisy, and I said, Lord, I don't want to do this out of habit. I want to do this out of love. Now I said, Lord, write your name on the tablets of my heart. You write your word on the tablets of my heart, Lord. If I offend anybody, Lord, let that eat at me. I don't want a heart of stone no more. I don't want to be bigger no more. He took all that when he took on Calvary. But you know what? It's up to us. He paid the price, but it's up to us to ask for it. Because he said, you have not because you ask not. Amen. And there's a lot of us. I mean, I pray. He told me this again this morning. You have not because you ask not. Do you ask specifically for things? Because sometimes you got to ask specifically for things. He, he is a mind reader, but he's a, he's a gentleman. He, he wants to give you your heart's desire. And he knows your very heart's desire. But he wants you to ask it. He wants you to speak to him. He wants you to communicate with him. He wants you to have a relationship. Sister Monica, if you never spoke to your husband, what kind of marriage would you have? You wouldn't have that. And that's the way it is with God. People, they want, they want God to move in their lives. And they want God to do this. And they want God to do that. I asked the question Tuesday night. I said... What would happen if the Lord blessed us by our faithfulness? What if, what if God did only for us when we prayed to Him? What if God only did for us when we blessed Him? Because I catch myself, Lord, do this for me. Lord, do that for me. Lord, and you know what? Today I got on the bus and, and, I, and I pray every day. I'm not boasting, but that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to pray every day. And Sister Jennifer, you really hit home that Sunday when you was talking about, well, I go down a list, Lord, bless Brother Tony and Sister Wendy and Sister Lisa. Because that's how I pray. Yeah, so and, and, and sometimes I don't give him time to say, hey, wait a minute, Wendy's having stomach problems. Or hey, wait a minute, you know. Because we, we get into a routine. And I don't know about you guys. I know Jennifer's tired, but when I get ready for bed, there's times that I don't even think I, I don't even know how far I get because I'm already out. Sometimes I'm, I'm out before I lay my head on the pillow. I'm so tired. But this morning I got on the bus and uh, I told the Lord today, I said, Lord, today I'm not asking you for nothing. Um. Lord, I'm thanking you for everything. And I started praising him. Because you know what? He said that he honors the praises of his people. Oh, yes. If you want to, if God to incline his ear to you, you start praising him. And I guarantee you, he'll be mountains. So my question is today, can your bones live? Are you speaking life into your bones? 
Really, are we? Because I told Sister um, Daisy, I said, you know, we've been in this way, and sometimes we was in the way too, Sister Jennifer, but I've been serving the Lord since 1991. And I said, I remember them used to preach in hell and brimstone and on sin and different things. I said, Harley, you don't hear that anymore. Not that our church, I mean, our church speaks on sin, don't get me wrong. But I'm just saying, it isn't the hard... Hell, yeah, hellfire and brimstone. It ain't. We don't have. I, I nobody calls an altar call. They'll say, if you want to pray, come pray. And our, everybody in our church knows to come and pray. But that's been dealing with me because I told Sister Daisy not too long ago. It was in our shut-in, wasn't it? I said I used to come in and I used to kneel before church. But see, I got away from that. And there's a lot of things. Like I said, this is for me. It's beat me to death since Monday. Literally beat me to death. Because you know what? He also told me, he said, there's a lot of people out here trying to please me. They want to be, they want to be accepted by men. They, do, they go out of the way for men. And you know what, Sister Daisy? I'm one of them people. I am one of them people. I'm sorry. I can't help it. It's my nature. I mean, I try, I do everything for the Lord, but I also try to, if I can help somebody, I try to help them. And sometimes, Sister Jennifer, that isn't a good thing. Sometimes it's a hinder. And sometimes it can be a, a, a monkey wrench, Brother Tony, in your sport. It really can be. And, and that's what he's telling me. You know, it's okay to love, and it's okay to help. It's okay to do these things, but please me. If you please me, and you do my law, then I'll make everybody else happy with you. You won't have to bend over backwards to do this or do that and, and all that. Because I'm your father. I'm a jealous God. I love you. And I'll set you in high places. I'll put you where you need to be. I'll work with you. And, you know, I thank him and praise him because he's showing me that. He's showing me that. And can these bones live? Absolutely. But they cannot live without the breath of God. They cannot live without the breath of God. And as I read down through there, it said that the breath of the Holy Spirit breathed on them. You know, if you go back to Genesis when it's talking about the beginning of the earth, it said that by the dust of the earth we was created. He took a big old hump of dirt he spit on it, Sister Jennifer, and he molded it into a person. He poked eyeballs in it, and me, he put this big old pig nose, because everybody makes fun of me. Because when I wipe my nose, I wipe it up, and they say, you got a pig nose, but that's okay. But he see these big old pig nose nostrils here, and he bred the bread of life in me. And he had a desire for my life. He put that life in me. But you know, sometimes we, being ignorant in our own and in sin, we let the devil come in and sniff and snuff and drag and pull you down where there's some days you don't even feel like even raising your head out of the bed because he just zaps the very life out of you. But tonight my question is, can these bones live? Because you know what? We have our mood and we have our being in Jesus Christ. It ain't us. It's him. Amen. Um, a couple weeks ago, of course, most of you know, I started at Walmart, and I worked back at the TLE, I worked back at our road, and, uh, and uh, everybody down there hustles, rants, and raves, you know, and every day I walk off and I say, Lord, you know, you're the only one that can, you know, <coughs> calm the situation, whatever it is, you know, or, or whatever, you know, you're the only one that can control, can control the you know, what's being said or whatever, you know. And uh, yesterday, yesterday while I was at work, I was out in the shop and, <clears throat> and uh, I walked up to this vehicle and I got a little handheld machine and I have to go around and have to scan the VIN numbers and get them in the, get them in the system. And, <clears throat> and I reached over to scan the VIN number and I went to scan and I was like, ah, this piece of junk like that. And, and one of the guys walked up and said, don't you mean 
and said something different. And I said, no, I said exactly what I needed to say. And, I, and he just kind of looked at me and I said, I'm sorry, sir, but I don't cuss. And he goes, and he, I mean, he's big on like the F word and stuff like that, you know. And he, he goes, I am so sorry. He, he immediately becomes very, very humble. And he goes, I am so sorry. He said, I'll never, ever cuss around you again. And in my head, I was thinking, you know, it doesn't bother me because I hear it every day. You know, it's not something that's going to get in my heart and stay there because I know how to get it out. You know, and Matthew 5.14, it says that, you know, we are a light of the world, a city that's set up on a hill. We're supposed to be a light unto, unto God, you know, and unto this world because, you know, this world is, there's none but darkness in the world, you know, and that's, you know, it's what, what I what basically work around is, is a bunch of people that are, you know, living in darkness and, you know, because they don't see the light, you know, so that's where we have to step in. And that's what was on my heart, you know, that's where we have to step in at to become the light of the world. If it means even just watching our mouth or, or hearing somebody say a curse word and you turn around and you walk away just to stay out of it, you know. Maybe that's, you know, maybe that's a step that somebody's got to take. And that's what I do at work. If I heard somebody cussing, ranting, and raving, I go on about my work. I go on to another section, do what I got to do, and then later on maybe go back. But I don't, you know, I don't get in the mix. I don't, I don't get into their personal lives. I don't get into their situations because that's not what God called me to do. God didn't call me to nose into their business or stand around and listen to their business. Maybe just help them along the way somehow. But, you know, if, if that was just the one thing that maybe put a seed in this guy's heart to, <clears throat> to get a step closer to God, then that's what, it, that's what it had to be. You know, even just saying, sorry, sir, I don't cuss, you know, because I don't. You can ask my husband. You know, he's never heard a curse word come out of my mouth, mm -hmm. you know, because I just don't. I mean, yeah, I get angry. I, you know, you know, that's Tony. I'm just working the shop. Maybe I've said a few things I shouldn't have. But, but you know what? I, I really, <clears throat> I really don't. You know, if I get angry anymore, I just, I bite my tongue, I clench my fist, and I just like, God, you're going to have to take care of this because I can't do this on my own. God didn't call me to do this on my own. You know, if, no. if I could do it on my own, then I wouldn't have needed God to be a Savior. When it needed him to begin with, you know, it's just like Isaiah 45 and 7, and you can read it for yourself. It says that I created light and I created darkness. And I'm not quoting this word for word, but it says, I created light, I created darkness. I, the Lord, that God created all these things. Why? To give us a choice. We got a choice, brother. We want to live like the world, or we want to live like God. We can't ride the fence. You know, we, we got to live one way or the other. The Bible says in Matthew, we got to be hot or cold, but we can't be lukewarm. You know, I, just, I I choose to stay hot. I don't want to be cold. Because if I get cold, then I turn around and I walk off. And I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. That's where I get to when I get cold. I don't want to do this anymore. You know, but if I know if I can stay hot, I know that I can stay on the side of the things I'm supposed to stay on. You know, and, uh, but that's what I had on my heart tonight. You know, I just, you know, we all just need to be a light in the, the world that, you know, that they may see God because we're the only Bible they're going to read. I had one of my cousins who popped me up on Facebook and said, I don't go to church, but, you know, I believe in God. You know I serve God. You know this. You know that. Yes, I do. I know this. And she said, but you're the only Bible I have. And I said, I try to do what God wants me to do no matter what the risk is. You know, I don't care if one of my one of my fellow co coworkers pulls me over and says, "Pray for me right now." I would drop everything I have to do and pray for them because, you know, I just I would, you know, and that, and if that's what it takes to get them a step closer to God, then that's what I'm going to have to do, you know. So, but I'm just I'm just glad that you know I have a job that's not going to stop me from serving God, you know. I, really, they ain't because that's one of their things in their policy. They can't stop you. No matter what you believe, they can't stop you, you know. And I, I'm just, I'm just really glad for what God's done for all of us. I love you all of you. But um, a couple weeks ago, of course, most of you know, I started at Walmart, and I worked back in the TLE. I worked back in our road, and uh, and uh, everybody down there hustles, rants, and raves. You know, and every day I walk off and I say, Lord, you know, you're the only one that can, you know, <coughs> calm the situation, whatever it is, you know, or or whatever, you know, you're the only one that can control, can control the, you know, 
what's being said or whatever, you know. And uh, yesterday, yesterday while I was at work, I was out in the shop and, <clears throat> and uh, I walked up to this vehicle and I got a little handheld machine that I have to go around and have to scan the VIN numbers and get them in the, get them in the system. <clears throat> and I reached over to scan the VIN number. I went to scan. I was like, ah, this piece of junk like that. And, and one of the guys walked up and said, don't you mean and said something different. And I said, no, I said exactly what I needed to say. And, I, and he just kind of looked at me and I said, I'm sorry, sir, but I don't cuss. And he goes, and he, I mean, he's big on like the F word and stuff like that, you know. And, and he, he goes, I am so sorry. He, he immediately becomes very, very humble. And he goes, I am so sorry. He said, I'll never, ever cuss around you again. And in my head, I was thinking, you know, it doesn't bother me because I hear it every day. You know, it's not something that's going to get in my heart and stay there because I know how to get it out. You know, and Matthew 5.14, it says that, you know, we are a light of the world, a city that's set up on a hill. We're supposed to be a light unto, unto God, you know, and unto this world because, you know, this world, is there's no but darkness in the world, you know, and that's, you know, it's what what I what basically work around is, is a bunch of people that are, you know, living in darkness and, you know, because they don't see the light, you know, so that's where we have to step in. And that's what was on my heart, you know, that's where we have to step in at to become the light of the world. If it means even just watching our mouth or, or hearing somebody say a curse word and you turn around and you walk away just to stay out of it, you know, maybe that's, you know, maybe that's a step that somebody's got to take. And that's what I do at work. If I hear somebody cussing, ranting, and raving, I go on about my work, I go on to another section, do what I got to do, and then later on maybe go back. But I don't, you know, I don't get in the mix. I don't, I don't get into their personal lives. I don't get into their situations because that's not what God called me to do. God didn't call me to nose into their business or stand around and listen to their business. Maybe just help them along the way somehow. But you know, if, if that was just the one thing that maybe put a seed in this guy's heart to <clears throat> to get a step closer to God. And that's what it, that's what it had to be, you know. Even just saying, "Sorry, sir, I don't cuss," you know, because I don't. You can ask my husband. You know, he's never heard curse word come out of my mouth. You know, because I just don't. I mean, yeah, I get angry. I, you know, you can ask Tony. This working shop, maybe I said a few things I shouldn't have, but but you know what? I I really <clears throat> I really don't. You know, if I get angry anymore, I just I bite my tongue, I clench my fist, and I just like. God, you're going to have to take care of this because I can't do this on my own. God didn't call me to do this on my own. You know, if no. if I could do it on my own, then I wouldn't have needed God to be a Savior. Wouldn't have needed Him to begin with. You know, it's just like Isaiah 45 and 7. And you can read it for yourself. It says that I created light and I created darkness. And I'm not quoting this word for word, but it says, I created light, I created darkness. I, the Lord, that God created all these things. Why? To give us a choice. We got a choice. Brother. We want to live like the world, or we want to live like God. We can't ride the fence. You know, we we got to live one way or the other. The Bible says in Matthew, we got to be hot or cold, but we can't be lukewarm. You know, I just I, I choose to stay hot. I don't want to be cold because if I get cold, then I turn around and I walk off, and I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. That's where I get to when I get cold. I don't want to do this anymore. You know, but if I know if I can stay hot, I know that I can stay on the side of the fence I'm supposed to stay. You know, and uh, but that's what I had on my heart tonight. You know, I just you know we all just need to be a light in the, the world that you know that they may see God because we're the only Bible they're going to read. I had one of my cousins pop me up on Facebook and said, I don't go to church, but you know I believe in God. You know I serve God. You know this. You know that. Yes, I do. I know this. And she said, but you're the only Bible I have. And I said, I try to do what God wants me to do, no matter what the risk is. You know, I don't care if one of my one of my fellow co coworkers pulls me over and says, "Pray for me right now." I would drop everything I have to do and pray for them, because you know, I just I would, you know. And, that, and if that's what it takes to get them a step closer to God, then that's what I'm going to have to do. You know. So, but I'm just I'm just glad that you know I have a job that's not going to stop me from serving God. You know, I, really they ain't because that's one of their things in their policy. They can't stop you, no matter what you believe. They can't stop you. You know, and I, I'm just, I'm just really glad for what God's done for all of us. I love you all. Yes, he is.
together lovely all the time, all the time. You know, I listen to Brother Tim, I listen to Sister Georgina, I listen to Sister Janice, I listen to Sister Monica. And I'm just going to read the word because the word will just basically sum it all up. Right. Because where are you going? Matthew chapter 7. I'm going to read a little bit. So read with me. Start at 7. Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that findeth to him that knocketh shall be open. For what man is there of you whom, if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father in heaven give good things to them that ask him? Sister Georgian, is that not what you say? Therefore all, thawing, all, therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do you even so to them. For this is the law of providence. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns, or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt, corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. You are that book. They are reading your book. They know you by the things that you speak. They know you by the things that you say. They know you by your actions. And many people say, I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't want people putting me on the spot. You know when you took the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior? You put yourself on the spot. Because they're watching you. They're looking at you. And they're seeing what you're doing. They're seeing how you react. That's just the way it is. They're reading your book. They're looking at your tree, Sister Monica. They're saying, she's an apple tree that's carrying apples. Or they're going to look at you and say, she's a plum tree and she's got some lemons on her. What's up with that? They're reading, they're reading your book. Absolutely. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done wonderful, many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye worker of iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon the rock, Brother Tim. And the rains descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. That rock is Jesus Christ. We are founded upon the rock. And it doesn't matter what comes our way. It doesn't matter how the winds blow. It doesn't matter how the rains come. It doesn't matter how much snow comes, Sister Monica. <laughs> I'm with you, sister. <laughs> it doesn't matter what comes our way. We are built on the rock of Gibraltar. We are on that strong rock that cannot be built. And the rains descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house. And it fell not, for it was found upon a rock. And every one that heareth these things of mine and doeth them shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rains descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell. And great was the fall of it. We have to be established on the rock. And that rock's name is Jesus. There is no other name under heaven or earth by which we must be saved but the name of Jesus Christ. That name is above all names, above every name. Every 
every knee should bow and every tongue will confess. And in that day, he is that great and mighty king. Hallelujah. The Lord of lords, the one and only, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He is our all in all. Amen. It's all in him. And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these things, the people were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Do you understand? There's going to come a day and time that you're going to give account for everything that you've done in this lifetime if you're not on the right side. Because I truly believe that right now we're giving account. Right now. Today. Today you are giving account. I believe that in that white throne judgment, we're going to be standing with Christ. We are going to be judging the world. He says, no, you're not. That the saints shall judge the world. We're not going to be over on that side where he's saying, depart from me, depart from me, depart from me, depart from me. I'm not going to be on that side. He's not going to say, remember when we're going to be gone. You ever have somebody do that? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sad, sad, sad. I do that to my little kids. <laughs> when they do something they're not supposed to, I'll go. Sad, sad, sad. And then they break down. Sad, sad, sad. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to be on this side, and I don't even have to open my mouth. Do you understand? We will not even have to open our mouths. We will just be there. We will just be there. Our very presence there. Our very presence, as Brother Tim said, that great gulf. That great gulf. As, as Lazarus said over and he said, just can't you just send someone? I have five brothers. Can you not just send someone to speak to them? Just send someone. And he said, peradventure that one would die and raise again. They will not hear. They will not hear. They will not hear. If one would raise from the dead, and go if I sent La, if I sent Lazarus back over there, if I sent Lazarus back over, the rich man says, you know, send send someone, send Lazarus, send La and they said, if I sent Lazarus, if I brought him back from the dead, your brothers would still go. Too bad, so sad, I'm doing my own thing. That's too bad. I don't have to live. I, I, I'm glad God brought you back from the dead. I'm glad that you that he's done all. But you know what? How many times have you tried to testify to somebody? Try to witness yeah, to somebody yeah, yeah, that yeah. God is capable of doing anything yeah, and they'll go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I hear you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sure that's good for you. But right. you know what? I have to do my thing. Right. Yeah. I'm, I've just got to do the way I'm going to do it. And you try to warn yeah, them yeah, that, that they're going to fall in the ditch. And they're shaking. I'm still going to do what I'm And all you can do is say, God be with you. <laughs> all you can, because you know what? You can't beat somebody into submission, can you, Sister Monica? You can't force someone to serve God. You can't. You cannot. Oh, so good. So true. Brother Pat has said a hundred times, if I drag you to the altar, someone else will drag you out. And we are led astray from our own wants, our own desires, our own flesh, the pride of life. We drag ourselves away. All you can do is, as Sister Monica said, be that light, be there, testify, witness to those people around you, be as Sister Jordan says, read your word, be established, know who he is, pray earnestly in your heart, the fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And as Brother Tim says, be ready, be ready, be ready. And Sister Jess, just as God was, was kind and compassionate and merciful and he brought recompense on those that, that, that abused the poor as he brought forth to them what they gave out and he established them and, and he lifted the poor and he gave them back all that the enemy tried to steal we, we are that same way God will restore to you he will restore to you everything the enemy tries to steal but the first thing you have to be is faithful you have to be faithful to God. You have to be faithful in so many ways. You have to be faithful in your prayer. You have to be faithful in your witnessing. You have to be faithful in your in your money. You have to be faithful in every way. In the time that you give to Him and the time that you give to the others around you. 
His word tonight is so good. It was brought forth in so many ways, and his word is always true. Amen. Amen. They are full, you know, and uh, but uh, God is good and he is faithful and uh, I just love him with all my heart. I've been so many good things said. You know, it's hard to uh, to take and, uh, uh, really to say it too much because it's been really good. And as she, uh, Sister Monique was talking, it brought to mind uh, Brother Pat worked at a, a place in Mooresville at one time and, and his boss was knew that Brother Pat, of course, was a Christian and that he was a pastor. And, and so he was always trying to get the other employees to not tell dirty jokes or not swear in front of Brother Pat. Brother Pat told him, he said, you leave them alone because I do not want to be the one that they didn't, don't want to be around because they have to watch their mouth. You know, I, I, uh, it's not going to affect me in my walk with Christ, and maybe I can be the one who says something that will cause them want to see God in a greater way. He said, so don't do that to me. Don't try to get them to, to be, be not their self when they're around me. Because he said, I would rather be around them. And he said, I'm not going to pay attention to their, their jokes or anything like that. He said, you know, I can always walk away. But he said, well, I don't want somebody to think that they can't be around me because all I'm too good at two shoes. I would rather be a light shining forth in a world of darkness. And, and that's what we have to be, Sister Monica. And, um, you know, um, I hopefully that uh, you will be able to minister and cause somebody to see the light. And so many times I know uh, anymore in uh, a lot of your workplaces, now they do uh, frown on you praying for people, uh, taking your time out to pray for people. But I get it when I worked at when I worked yeah, out. They if somebody needed prayer, I stopped right in the middle of running, ringing somebody up and laying hands on them and praying for them. Or uh, when I was in the deli, I would say, "Come out here in the kitchen, uh, the little kitchen area, and lay hands on them and pray for them." But um, some uh, some companies I know I have heard of different ones that. That say you, you need to be careful when you yeah. go pray for. You know what? They you may, can still pray they, for. Yeah, they may they may even one day take take God completely out of Walmart, but you know what? They can't take him out of here. Can't take him out of here. Take him out of here. Absolutely. Oh. Because they didn't give it to me. Oh. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Absolutely. They didn't give it to me, and they can't take it away. So we know we know that. We absolutely know that. This is just standing before you. <laughs> that is good. Well, my thought that was on my heart tonight was in 2 Timothy. And uh, so, like Sister Jennifer said, I'm just going to just read a little bit. Uh, this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. And uh, truly perilous times has Amen. came. Amen. It says that it shall come, but it right, perilous times is right now. And we see that every in all shapes, you know. Uh, Brother Pat uh, held a revival in Morgantown, uh, West Virginia. Oh my, it must have been 30 years ago. Maybe, no, it's longer now. Probably 34 years ago. And uh, he preached on that. And I remember it was, uh, he, he, we preached three, he preached three nights. And he preached on the peril of the nation, the peril of the home, and the peril of the church. Three different things, and uh, each night was a different subject. And it truly is, today we look around and I, like I said, that's 34 years ago. It's worse now than it was oh, wow. 34 years ago. And truly we look around and we see all the things that are happening in this world today. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Isn't that the truth? Yes, it is. Men are lovers of their own self more than lovers of God or their fellow man. <coughs> so George Ann was talking about having a stony heart. Brother Tony's talked so many times about how he hated his own children. It's hard to imagine you could hate Shayla. She's a sweetheart. She's so sweet, so good. 
wasn't Shayla then. Nope. It wasn't. No, it was it not. Was but when Jesus comes in your heart, truly comes in your heart, it makes a difference, doesn't it? I know that. I know that very well. I know that very well. I remember it quite well. Sister Wanda emailed me and said that, that the kids wanted to come to church. And I said, well, you are welcome to come to church. Shayla wasn't very old at all at that time. Here she is now, a young lady. But anyway, we know that uh, men are lovers of themselves more than they are lovers of God. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedience to parents, unthankful, unholy. Woo! Well, you can just take your time and speak on every one of those. <laughs> yeah. With na without natural affection. Woo, you see that every day? I don't even watch the news because it's so depressing. You hear of uh, somebody shooting someone or them finding a baby uh, somewhere or, you know, a parent's killed a child or a boyfriend or a girlfriend and uh, beat a baby up or, you know, uh, shaking syndrome, shake, shake the baby till it, you know, or whatever. But there's so many times now, we see it more than we ever did. Truly, unnatural affection. Without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinence, fears, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. How true that is. We can look around and we see that every day. Just look at the attendance on a Thursday night. <coughs> We used to be almost full yeah. on Thursday night. But you know what? No, the Lord just spoke this to me, so you've got to take it. Or you're going to throw it over your shoulder one. How many times have we been at inviting somebody? <clears throat> How many times do we ask somebody, why don't you go to church tonight with me? You know, I'll come by and pick you up. Okay, well I know some of us, George Ann's got a truck. She can't she can't go pick people all the time. Well I'm saying you can't pick a stop by and pick them up. <laughs> but I'm just I just told you what the Lord just says. Okay? But it's true. How often do we get so um, that we're just thinking about ourselves and we go and, and we sit in the church and and um, we don't uh, take time to invite somebody or, you know, uh, try to encourage them. We got to like, we got to be a light shining forth in the world of darkness. And I know everybody says there's going to be a great, great revival. I know that, and I sure hope there is. I pray that there is. But in my Bible, it says there's going to be a great falling away. So, okay. But I pray that there is. Maybe there'll be a great, great revival. But there's been a lot of revivals through the years. There's been some many, many. You know, if everybody in Martinsville that had ever been saved was to come together, all the churches couldn't hold them. Even the people that say they belong to Gateway Tabernacle, this church would not hold them. Because of so many people, you ask them, well, they don't go to church, but who's their pastor or where, you know, if they went to church, where were they at? Gateway Tabernacle. I couldn't, we never kept a record. We, through all these 26, 27 years, we never kept a record of all that we baptized. But it's hundreds that we have baptized and, and we saw them filled with the Holy Ghost. But where are they at? I'm talking about hundreds. But you know, this is a church of reconciliation. I mean, do what? I said we're also a church of reconciliation. Yes, we are. We, I, we've always said that. We said that we are, a lot of people call us generic, but the generic really is the real thing. And, uh, but you know, um, but that's very, very true. 
Hallelujah. Having a form of godliness, but denying <coughs> the power thereof from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep in the houses and leave captivity silly women laden with sin, led away with divers lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. <coughs> Let that sink in a little bit here. Yeah. Forever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. What is the truth? The truth is Jesus Christ and Him crucified and risen from the dead. He paid a, the price, the ultimate price. He, he laid down His life. He could have called 10,000 angels to come to His rescue. He did not have to lay down his life. But he knew from the day that he was born what he came for. He came to give you life and more abundantly. He came to give you peace. He came to be your guide. He took every sin. A man who did no sin took every sin of the world. Just can you imagine that? He took the sin of the murderer he took the sin of the drug addict, the harlot, whoever. God took that sin upon himself. That we did not have to go to hell. And that he is the only way, Brother Tim. If we try to go any other way, it says that we be as a thief and a robber if we try to go any other way. Because there is no other way other than Jesus. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Hallelujah. He's a good God, and He's a God that we can depend upon. No matter what we're going through, God is able. And the Word has been good. You know, I, I really enjoy this, that everybody has got a little saying. Everything sort of went along together that was said tonight. And I know God, He has a plan. God has a plan for us. I know He does. And uh, I want to be in His plan. I want to be in His purpose. Whatever His will is for us, that's what, exactly what I want to be. You know, I, I hate it that my husband's not here. I'm like, my pastor, you know, he may be my husband, but he's still my pastor. Just say, is he your pastor? He is my pastor. And it's hard not having your pastor. But I praise God that I know that God is able. God is, He is more than able to keep each and every one of us that we don't have to become as the beggar elements of the world. We don't have to become like that. We don't have to ride the fence. We have to make a choice. And that choice is that we need to serve God with everything in us. You know, it's just like an athlete. Whenever an athlete uh, decides, if somebody's running a marathon, when he decides he's going to run a marathon, he don't set out to run 25 miles or 26 miles. He doesn't, he'd never make it. But he starts training. And he, he learns to run a mile. Then he, after he gets that mile down pretty good, he'll run two miles. Then after he's got that, he'll run, he might even decide to run four miles, might double it. But he don't start out running 25 miles. He has to train to do that. And you know, that's exactly what we have to do. We are just the same as an athlete. We have to take and train. We have to run a little bit in the Word. Study the Word. I'm not talking about run, but I'm talking about studying the Word of God. Hearing the, uh, the preachers and, and, and worshiping God. And, you know, I'm not talking about just praying, but I'm talking about praying until the Holy Ghost and the Spirit comes upon you and you're praying to God earnestly. And, you know, you may not even know what you're saying, but God knows exactly what you're praying. God knows what you need when we don't know what we need. God knows what your brothers and sisters need, even if you don't know what they need. And listening to His voice when He, when he tells you to get up and to pray for somebody and, and hold them, and, you know, and earnestly pray and travail for them uh, so Jennifer was talking the other day, and I normally don't say anything about that, but her daughter was really on my heart. And I had asked Brother Tim, Sister Jennifer was, had, had been in the hospital and wasn't here, and I, I'd asked Brother Tim, I said, Brother Tim, is Mandy all right? 
and Caitlin, and he said, well, I'm glad you asked me that. He said, there's something going on. And of course, I didn't know until later when Jennifer told me what all was going on. But she just, he laid her and came on my heart so much that I just, I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. But I'm not saying that that's just one, one incident. But that's what we have to do. We have to have our, and I didn't know because I haven't seen her for, I brought well last time I saw her was when Brother Ronnie died. At Brother Ronnie's service, it was the last time I even saw her. So it don't matter when God speaks something to you. You need to earnestly listen when He's talking to you. You need to study the Word of God. So study that we show ourselves approved. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Are you ashamed of God? We cannot be ashamed of God. We've got to let our light shine forth in the world of darkness. We got to let our light shine that others can see, that others will know. It's just like they were talking about the, the uh, piece of white paper and you put a little dot on it. What do we see most of the time? We see about that little, see that little dot and not on the rest of the picture. But we need to earnestly, because God is soon to come. And you know what? I want to go with him. I am going with him. I'm not wanting one. I always told Brother Patton that we, we talked about two laying in the bed. I said, well, I don't care. You know, I am going to be the one that's going. And he said, well, I'm going to be going. I said, so we must be going to go. So that's just a reference that God left. And, but, yeah, there will be many people that there will be two, two in the bed and they both will go. But there will be some that one will go and one will be left behind. And absolutely, absolutely. There's people sitting in the pews and and people serving God today that one day they're not going to go and they're going to stand before him and they're going to say, but, but, but. Depart from me. He said, work, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. There's people that is killing one another sitting in the pews. There's people that think they are the only ones that's going to go to heaven. And I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of people <coughs> serving God that are not only Jesus, you know. But sometimes that some churches think that they're the only church that's going to go. But there's a lot of other churches that love the Lord. And I can't believe that God's going to take and leave them behind. But you know what? It's all up to Him. It don't matter what I think. That's right. It don't make a difference what I think, you know. It's all up to God. God is the author, the finisher of our faith. God is the one that we have to, you know, he's the judge, not us. We're going to be with him on that day of judgment, but we won't have to, we're not, we're going to be like him. We will be like Jesus. Then that day when we get changed, we will be like him. And so we know we'll know how to judge as he would judge. Right now, we don't know how to judge. Oh, no. We do not know how to judge. No, no. On the other side of the corner that you were speaking for today, they, they were talking that in the, that is the country where it was, the people preaching your name. Eagles, I don't hear using my name. Well, they, well, they heard them. Leave them alone. And he had many other flocks. Other That's people. right. Absolutely. And we don't know about these flocks. No. We, it's not our concern about these flocks. Right. That's we just said, know what we know and what God has revealed to us. Everybody has to be, re uh, there's things that we learn every day when we yeah, study yeah. the Word of God, you know, and uh, we know God, God is a revealer of the Word of God. You may read it a hundred times, and one day you read it and it just comes alive to you, and you have a greater understanding than you've ever had of the Word of God. So it's an always learning, always learning, always learning. And don't you wish that you had the wisdom and the knowledge, hallelujah, that that uh, has come through many, many great prophets through the Amen. years. Amen. As Solomon had great wisdom. Right. And I, I know I was thinking, um, I think it was yesterday, I was meditating on the Word of God. And, and I was thinking about the, when the lady, the two ladies came to him and, and with the one with the baby and 
And uh, he said, well, just cut the baby in half, oh, you know, no. just cut it in half, and, yeah, and each one of you will have half of it. Because he knew the true mother of that child would say, let her have it. Because she would not want it to die. And so, and Solomon knew that. He absolutely knew that. That, it, but it, I was just meditating on that. I thought the love that sometimes we have to just let people go until they seem like they just absolutely reach the bottom because we love them. And God can speak to them sometimes through all of that. God's good. I, pray, I praise Him. He's great, 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 great. He's a great God. Does anybody else have anything they have to say, want to say? All hearts free. God's been good. God's been in our midst. Aren't you glad that He's always with us? He never leaves us. He will never forsake us. We're two or more gathered together in His name. There He is in the midst. So God has been here tonight. The Word's been good. I praise Him for that. Amen. Amen. We will be dismissed.